Winston Churchill, in his speech in the House of Commons this afternoon, said, For now, nearly two years, Malta has stood against the enemy. What a thorn it has been in their side. What a toll it has taken of their convoys. For the last six weeks, over 450 German first-line strengthened aircraft and perhaps 200 Italian have been venting their fury on Malta. Can't they fire now? No. How long do we wait in Malta? Just a few minutes or till morning? Depends what's happening when we get there. But I expect you refuel and go straight on. Pity. Of course, I want to get to Cairo as quickly as possible, but I would like to see Malta in daylight. I believe there's some very interesting megalithic remains. Well, there are certainly some very interesting remains on Malta nowadays. Megalithic and otherwise. Runway looks clear. If there's a doctor in the house, will he please come to the stage door? Okay, that's us. Hold, James. You chaps don't like being driven by someone else, do you? <laughs> Not onto an airfield in the middle of a raid. <laughs> You've been stationed here long? Since it started. And the aircraft? Security. Watch out, big crate 100 yards over on the left. Okay. Right, right. Crater dead ahead. Well, we're down in one piece anyway. Get them out, quick. Right. Right. Everyone out, please, as big as you can. Come on. Always like this? Usually. Colourful, isn't it? I think after all I can manage without seeing it in daylight. They refuel as soon as they get a chance and get you off. Sorry. Cancel my last remark. That's our bomber squadron. Hello, Red Gauntlet. This is Lucky. Angels 2-0, Angels 2-0, report damage, over. Epsom 2-1 to Lucky. Okay, bandits destroyed. Out. Steady. You mustn't just knock them down like that. Most improbable. You must search and find them, and then knock them off. Oh, sorry, our boy. This phantom squadron of yours seems to be doing great execution, Ramsey. Thank you, sir. Two of the Jerry's just knocked each other down. What had happened to them if we were really up there, I can't think. Well, I'll try to get seen that. Yeah. Come on, Frank, get rid of this lot. I've got a couple of submarines outside the harbour waiting to come in. Willie. You must put some proper trousers on, you'll catch cold. You'll catch something worse than that, my boy, if we don't get those subs in. After all, it's your ruddy petrol they've got. Thank God for the Navy. You shall have a drop for your lighter, Willie. Hello, Eden. Are you all right? Yes, sir, just. They got the Hudson on the ground. Yes, I know, damn it. Anyone hurt? No, we were all out in time, but we now have a lodger. A lodger? A photographic reconnaissance pilot named Ross. He was going through Dakar on the Hudson, so of course he's stranded. Shall I keep him with me, or will your people look after him? PR pilot, eh? I wonder if he's any good. I don't know. Rather an odd fish. We talked on the plane. He got into the PR racket because he'd done some aerial photography on his job. Uh, he's an archaeologist. Oh, crikey, that sounds menacing. Is he all right? Yes. Well, he's not a born military type, but I'd back him. Hmm. Well, come and tell me how you got on in Whitehall.
Flight Lieutenant Ross, I'm looking for Wing Commander Bartlett. Very good, sir. You'll find him in the operations room, I think. Straight out of the tunnel, fourth door on the right, sir. Thank you. Morning, chap. Good morning. Miss Rivers, there doesn't seem to be a plot on picture two. Get one right away, will you? Yes, sir. Get another radar report on number two photographic reconnaissance, please, Tanya. It should be a matter of ordinary routine by now. Where's the Sicily plane? Just crossing the coast. I'll see you tonight at eight. Mind you, keep on to him. Yes, sir. In Commander Bartlett. Who are you? Flight Lieutenant Ross, sir, in transit for Cairo. Thank you, Miss Rivers. Oh, yes. Cairo. I'm afraid the old man would like to have a word with you first. Oh? Well done, Hobley. That's four of the fleet air arm this month. There you are. I don't know what Nelson would have said about your flying under RAF command. The only thing Nelson ever minded about was scuppering the enemy. Uh, thank you, sir, but with respect, if the prize is half a bottle for sinking a 5,000-ton ship and a whole bottle for sinking a 10,000-ton ship, uh, surely an 8,000-tonner. And fully loaded, sir. Uh, and among state, all naval. Oh, all right. Now, I'll stretch a point. I always had a soft spot for the Navy. You'll be flying again tonight, so you'll see your boys go easy on that. Aye, sir. I don't quite understand why you should want to see me. Well, I'm in charge of the photographic unit, and you're a PR pilot. You can't go into Cairo because your Hudson's had it. See? No. You will. The old man's pretty good at making things crystal clear. Hello, Frank. Save some of that for me, will you? You go and sink your own ships, you candid cameraman. <laughs> Come in. Flight Lieutenant Ross, sir. Ah, yes. Glad to see you, Ross. Ah, uh, manor from heaven, Willie. Uh, this is Admiral Banks. How do you do, sir? I sent a signal to the Commander-in-Chief Middle East about you last night, saying that we'd uh, lost a PR pilot, and would he mind if we hung on to you instead? I've just got his reply. He doesn't. Well? Thank you, sir. Bit unorthodox, eh? Well, this is rather an unorthodox place. We have to make up our words and music as we go along, eh, Bartlett? Yes, sir. Come and look at this and you'll understand. Germans and Italians all along here. In Sicily, he's only 58 miles from our coast. To the south, here, Rommel. Here he is now, doing everything he can to get through to Egypt. And after that, the Suez Canal. You know what that means, don't you? All the oil in the Middle East and the route to India. Right. But if he's going to succeed, he's got to be supplied with guns, men, ammunition and fuel along here. Or here. Or down this way. You see why Malta's got to be held? So that men like you can go and find Rommel's supply ships and men like Hobley can go and sink them. Or if we haven't the means, to pass the job on to Middle East Command. You're what we used to call the eyes of the fleet. In this case, the eyes of Malta. And we're as short of them as everything else. Do you see why I grabbed you? Yes, I do, sir. Right. Bartlett's your CEO. He'll fill in the Lloyd details. Off you go and get on with it. Oh, and Ross. Sir? Thanks for coming to help us. It was the least I could do, sir. Straight from Gibraltar. But in your submarines? It's a mighty good job they got here, all right. Or well, we should have been in a jam for petrol. Yes. I've got a bit of tough news for you, Frank. I'm afraid this is their last trip for a time. Our bases were bombed again last night and one of the subs was hit. The other's leaving this afternoon. But for good? Well, until the raids slacken off a bit. Pity. They were the last naval ships in Malta. Except for a few MTBs. Yes, it's getting a bit lonely. I'm damn sorry, Frank. You know if I could, I'd swim and get the bloody stuff for him. I know you would, Willie. We haven't got any water wings. Hmm. 8,000 tons. Fully loaded. All you have to do is to get me some more like it. Of course, you realize Frank's fleet air arm boys can only deal with very easy targets. The ships that are sinking practically of their own accord and so on. If anything has to be really seriously attacked, then it's a job for me. 
I'm afraid I don't know much about recce over the sea. My speciality has been marshalling yards. Hmm? I beg your pardon? Marshalling yards, you know, trains. I see. Of course, the only thing that limits a marshalling yard specialist here is the uh, lack of marshalling yards. Pity. I was just developing a rather interesting technique with marshalling yards. Still, even if you can't have your puff puffs, you still have your little camera, and views of great interest abound. I went on a train once, that was many years ago. I seem to remember it ran on shiny things called rails. No, that may not have been a train. That may have been a tram. Bouncing along the embankment at night with the river on one side and the road on the other. Going... That was a Chinese tram, but you get the idea. <laughs> Never mind about the trams. <laughs> I've got a job for you right away. I would have liked you to have been able to stoot around a bit more and get the feel of things. But this is urgent. You fly straight to Brindisi, get the pictures of the docks, and fly straight back here. Got it? I still take the same photographs, even if the convoy's not there. Yes. You've got long-range tanks on. But go easy on the juice, because they're mighty short of it on the island. And for Pete's sake, remember what I told you about radio silence. If you start talking while you're up in the air, the enemy fighters will jump at you like a pile of bricks. Never talk to the ground here, OK? Right. Good luck, sir. Thank you. Picture one there, Bon. devil do you think you are? Messing about taking blasted pictures 90 miles off your course. Hasn't he got through to that alleged mind of yours they were short of petrol? Don't you realize that men and ships are being lost every month of the year trying to bring the stuff out to us? For what? So that you can joyride about in the sky looking for ruddy railway stations. We've got no time for line shooting amateurs in this setup, Ross. All right, get the transport of a letter. AOC wants to see you at nine. Nine? Oh, lose yourself. Gary, sir? What? Gary, you like ride my Gary? Not now. Do you know this place? Been here all my life, senor. Well, can you tell me where I can get a decent meal? Meal? Manjari. Manjari? <laughs>
Maria, it's not safe to go outside. But I'm late, Father. They will understand. Try to tell Rosser. Ross, you disobeyed orders. Yes, sir. Why? I'm sorry, sir. Answer my question. Why? Well, the freight on that train looked interesting, sir. I wonder where it came from, and if there was any more waiting at the junction further north. There was, sir. I see. So you flew 90 miles off course to prove it. This isn't the desert, or the Russian front, or even England. We can't get extra supplies of petrol just by lifting the phone and asking for them, is that clear? Yes, sir. And we can't waste valuable time court-martialing flight lieutenants. From now on, you'll fly strictly to orders. Understand? Yes, sir. Right. At first light tomorrow, you will find those trucks of yours again, and you will go on photographing them until someone tells you to stop. Well, any questions? No, sir. No, unless those trucks... Uh, precisely, those trucks. Come here, Ross. Bartlett. You see those crates? They've got gliders inside them. And they're moving south. There's only one place where they could be going, Sicily. And once they're assembled there, there's only one purpose they could be used for. An airborne invasion of this island. You will photograph those trucks wherever they go, Ross. And by the time they've unloaded their freight, you'll never want to see one of them again. All right? Yes, sir. You'll see that he does it, Bartley. I will, sir. All right, Ross. Thank you, sir. Uh, Bartley. Sir. All this is top secret, understand? Make sure Ross realizes it. Very good, sir. When are we getting some more Spitfires, sir? They're supposed to be on their way. But if this lot arrives before they do, Malta... Yes, sir. Well, your guns okay. Well, I'll try to help. Hello. 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 So you weren't killed? Oh, no. I hardly ever am. You deserve to be. I was late for my watch here. Do you make that journey every evening? Of course, I have to come and go home. I don't think you should do it by yourself. Perhaps... Perhaps I might have the pleasure of seeing you home safely. That would be very kind. And if you were to bring an umbrella? What for? To keep the bombs off. What time do you get away? Ten o'clock. All right. I'll wait for you. Liaison with the plotters, eh? Oh, well, it's not a bad thing up to a point. I'm only seeing her home. She's very reckless. All right, all right. Are you married? Certainly not. Good. I'd like to try Maltese beer. Thanks. I'll have you back by ten. I've got something to do here myself, then. Thank you, senor. I gave him four shillings. Is that about right? 
three would have been enough, really. Do you see where you are? More or less. This must have been very beautiful once. This is our house. It is rather a funny little place, I'm afraid. My father used to build houses. He built this for us when we lost our home. He was killed last year in a raid. It's awfully well done. Please, would you like to come in? Thank you. Yes. Mother, this is Flight Lieutenant Ross. Welcome to our home, Mr. Ross. Thank you, Mrs. Gonza. Forgive me if I go on doing this. It is powdered milk for my grandson, Ninu. This is his father, my son, Paolo. And his wife, Carmen. How do you do? How do you do? Are you a fighter pilot? No, I just take photographs. You take photographs of enemy targets for our bombers, Mr. Ross? Yes. Ah, yes. I'm anti-aircraft. Oh, really? I have a battery on the coast. I'm only a few hours leave, the first for many months. Chocolate. Thank you. <laughs> there we go again. Well, Mr. Ross, are we going to be invaded? Mother, I tell you, you know nothing about it. <laughs> she will listen to Rome radio. It is sometimes very funny, this propaganda. Always, of course, our military expert. But I also read. I use my eyes and my ears. And still she knows nothing. Nothing. You must all know more about it than I do. I've only just come here. And the first thing you meet is Maria and all the silly consorts. That is bad luck for you, Mr. Ross. Not at all. On the contrary. Take no notice of Mother, Mr. Ross. It is well known one must take no notice These of These are, of course, only my silly children. I have also a clever son, Giuseppe. Oh, he's so clever, the Italians caught him. Really? A prisoner? No. He was studying in Italy when the Italians declared war. So now he is interned. But he's safe. Oh, yes. Sometimes I have letters from him. Of course, they are censored, but we know he is safe. Safer than we are, by the sound of it. Giuseppe would be here, if he could. You hear? It is getting much heavier than it was a few weeks ago. They say so here. Of course, they cannot tell us everything, but what they do tell us is true. It is building up for something, Mr. Ross.
a good bunch they are. Yes. Joan, I think there's an order coming out soon about English women who can leaving the island. Splendid. Even less competition. I dare say. But I think you ought to get out of here. Sir, do you realize just what would happen to that operations room without me? Here I am, practically defending the island single-handed, and you have a cheek to suggest. No, but quite seriously. I think it's much wiser. One can't just go around being wise, darling. Gosh, it's lovely to be out of it all for a few hours. This is a new development. See what I mean about getting out of here? Nonsense. I shouldn't think of leaving if they're going to act in that way. My God, John, the bus. Well, that's jolly, isn't it? The intelligence people are regretful but definite. Have we got any bombers to have a go at him? Not after last night. Matthews hasn't a serviceable plane left. You couldn't use fighters. Fifteen serviceable. If we lose those, there'll be no air defense at all. Did you see the crates? They're being loaded onto barges. I should think some of them are in Sicily already. Well, if they're on their way to Sicily, that settles it. If only we got a couple of squadrons of bombers. So this mess. You better go and get rested up. Probably do with it. A nice long sleep. Hello, Peter. I just wanted to apologize for not having come in. I've been rather busy. Oh, yes, I know. I have been watching you. Watching me? Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. I always forget that you come on these expeditions. I'll remember in future. Anyhow, I've got 12 hours off, and I thought perhaps we might go out somewhere. What you need is sleep, not going out. You go and sleep first, Peter. Then we see. Go on. You're quite right. Sir. See, it's just a mess. Can't do anything with it. No. That's jamming all right again. When did you say it started? Well, there it is, gentlemen. Mass raids on the airfields, low-level attacks on the civilian population, and I just had a report they're jamming on radar. It all adds up to an invasion. And so, when are the Spitfires actually due? Any time now. Depends when the carrier can get them off. I can't do anything much until they show up. I have nothing to do it with. I am sure that both of you have done everything possible. I can't help thinking, Frank. But while I must keep the defences manned, the most important thing is to try to keep those airfields serviceable in case your Spitfires do get here in time. Agreed. And if we better go on using as many of my fellows as we can on the airfields, even if it leaves us a bit light elsewhere. Thank you, General. Not at all. I'm sure everybody will be charmed. It's a fine day off we're having. First, if it takes 30 tons to fill one hole, and we've filled 14 this morning, how many tons is that? Far too many, and a lot of good it'll do, too. The buzzers, there's 50 Spitfires coming. Ah, there's been 50 Spitfires coming ever since I've been here, and all that's come is about 500 jerrys. Another 30 tons purse. Ah, what did I tell you?
a bunch of ballet dancers. Right turn, quick march. We're too nice, Sarge. We're going to that there field. Sit, dig some nice big holes, put long straight poles in them so the Germans can't land their aircraft or gliders. You see, lad, that's what's called air strategy. You roll the ruddy runway so people can land, then you stick poles up in it so they can't. That's good, that is. All runways serviceable now, sir. Good. Yes, 47 Spitfires. On their way now. You'll take 27, 10 each to go to Halfarn to Cardiff. OK. Good luck. All three airfields ready to receive Spitfire, sir. Fine. If the Germans let us get away with it. Right, let's have them on the table. They're flying the Spitz in from the American carrier, Wasp. It's a long haul, but they'll just about make it. Then, if only the Germans will give us time to get them refueled. Cable clear of enemy raids, sir. Huh? Well, let's hope it stays clear. But as late as this, I'm afraid they'll just catch it. One hundred plus bandits approaching the coast. Mother, it is a very heavy raid. It is not here. It is on the airfield. It will be the new Spitfires thereafter. Do not be afraid, Carmela. If they hit us, it will be a mistake. For once, they have something better to do than to try and kill Nino. Disappointing. Do you know how many Spets we lost last night? I heard it was 15. 20. 20 out of 47. And they weren't even airborne. Of course, turning up then, they just called the Dusk Raids. Have you seen this, sir? I thought it might cheer you up a bit. We who have been thought worthy of this high honor and distinction must see that we live worthy of it. And in this critical time, that we do not shrink from giving all we have. Malta has shown the world that she can endure, and the world knows that she will never weaken. But not until the inevitable day of victory can the full story of Malta, GC, be told. The safety of this fortress rests under God on four supports. The three fighting services and the civilian population. Each one of these is essential to the others and to the whole. 
As we are co-recipients of the great honor bestowed by His Majesty the King, let us also be sure that we are really cooperative, and making this cooperation ever more complete and effective, go forward together in our united strength and faith. But it is for two, and a child. That's right, it's for two and a child. He's been cut again, you know. It is for your mouse trap. It is a mouse's portion. You have been a long time. There are nano buses. Yes, yes, you shall have it. Now sit down. I have eaten mine. I was hungry. Are you sure? Of course. You can see that that is not the ration for three. Carmela. No, I myself am not hungry. It is absurd to say always you are not hungry. You will eat yours or I shall be very cross. And you are not to give it to the little pig who is already fat. Come in, Mother! Two ships are in. Four ships? Yes, big ones, or fairly big, and more coming tonight. Come and see. Never get through, eh? I thought there were 17 of them. That was the yarn. What's happened to the rest of them, eh? Well, they've been fighting for nearly four days. You can't expect them all to arrive in a eat, can you? So the rest's coming, eh? Yeah. Hi. Hi, it's just a bit of a delay. I bet they'll be in tonight. Most of them, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, misery. Celebration, see? Tell her. I must now break to you what the arrival of only two ships means to us. This is a siege. We shall be called upon this summer to bear all the privations of soldiers and citizens in a besieged city. We are short of food, water, clothes, and fuel. But let us remember that the most glorious sieges in history have always meant hardships. And without hardships, there would be little glory. It is perhaps not glory that we lack. They'll get more through next time. Of course, this is the only one that's been properly excavated. The temple of Menidra has hardly been touched. No. Oh, 
you see that that's been worked? Mm-hmm. Oh, it really is heartbreaking to be spending one's time taking photographs of ports when there's all this waiting. Peter? Yes? Do you think they will come? Who are the Germans? I shouldn't think so. Why not? They have many more planes. There's nothing much to stop I them. don't think things happen like that, do they? I mean, not just by counting up, there are other things that decide. You mean God? More that sort of thing. You have faith, as we are told to have? Oh, I wouldn't say that. Anyhow, does it matter very much? Peter, what do you mean, does it matter? Well, of course it matters now, because that's what we're doing, seeing that they don't take Malta. That's the job in hand. All I meant was that a temporary loss of civilization probably doesn't matter very much in the long run. After all, people have been fighting their wars around this place for 5,000 years or more. It's still here. Phoenicians, Greeks, Turks, they've all come and gone. I don't know what you mean. I don't care about the Phoenicians and Turks. I only care about us. You realize if they did come and capture Malta, we should be separated? Doesn't that matter to you? Yes, that does matter. Because we must be together, mustn't we? And when there is no war, come here and talk. If it must happen, it will happen. We'll come here and talk. And they won't take Malta. You do believe that too, don't you? Yes, Peter. Yes, I do. I'm quite sure. Of course, when we took the place first, the garden was just a jungle. I just got the lawn going. Cost me a packet with grass seed, the price it is. And now I get a letter from Margaret saying, Everybody's digging for victory, so she's digging it up and planting cabbages. Cabbages in my lawn. How big is the lawn? Oh, it's only about 20 yards square. It's quite a small garden. But very nice. Particularly in the spring, lots of bulbs. Margaret says the daffodils are very good this year. Will you have your bread now, Sarah? Save us for lunch. Oh, lunch. Oh, I'm tired of kitchen soap and cold water. Cypher, sir. I'll give it to the Admiral. If that's another query of our morale, I'll cut my throat. Well, what is it? How many Spitfires do you like, Frank? Oh, think of a number and double it. Sixty any good? Read it, please, Willie. It says 60 Spitfires will be flown into Malta from the American carrier Wasp in three days from now. Time to land in daylight. On the following day, the unescorted mine layer Welshman will arrive Grand Harbour with a cargo of petrol oil, aircraft spares, food and powdered milk. Powdered milk's good. They think of everything, don't they? Three days. Well, if Jerry gives us that long, well, I don't much see why he should. In addition to which? What? Vice Admiral Payne will arrive in Welshman to take up duties as Vice Admiral Malta. Vice Admiral Banks will take passage in Welshman to Gibraltar. Oh, no, Willie. Well, I was expecting it. I've been here six months longer than I should anyway. Payne's a good chap. You'll like him. I'm glad the Spitfires will arrive before I go. Yes, as uh, long as nothing else arrives first. Well, if they get in in time and in daylight, Jerry may burn his fingers. <laughs> Every Spitfire will have its own number. As each machine lands and taxis off the runway, it'll be met by one of you on a motorcycle. Your machine will have the same number written on a board and mounted above the back wheel. You will lead the aircraft to the pen allotted to it, where it'll be refueled and rearmed straight away. Sergeant Vella, sir. No ammunition restriction for the next eight hours. Very good, sir. Okay, Peter, is that clear? I bring blue section into Takali, you bring red section over the harbour into Luca. 
If we get this lot in okay, perhaps they'll think twice about their gliders. <laughs> yeah. Hello. Raids dispersed, sir. The table's clear of enemy aircraft. Any sign of the Spitfires yet? No, sir. Hello? Hello? Yes? Fine. Here we are, sir. Guests approaching coast. We've made it, Frank. It looks like it. What was it the Duke of Wellington said after Waterloo? A darn close run thing? Well, now, if our German friends will give us half an hour, we'll be delighted to see them. Don't open fire. Friendly aircraft approaching from the northwest. Don't worry. Friendly aircraft approaching from the northwest. Stand by for enemy attack. All right, sir. Number 41. Number 27. Number 11. Number 19. Aircraft, you know, sir. Can't be the spits. No, it's not Spitfires. Sir, 40 plus bandits approaching. How many Spits have we got down now? 31, rearmed and refueled, sir. Get them up. <coughs> Scramble. Come on, Willie. Your farewell party. We can't miss this. Hunter Squadron, Scramble.
of course, as soon as any food does come, I go. Ah. Ah, well. Goodbye, Payne. I wish you luck. Goodbye. Keep this fellow Frank in his place. And don't think just because he hasn't got as loud a voice as mine. You can boss him. He's tough. I'm used to tough admirals. Don't forget us, Willie. Malta, my dear sir, is in my thoughts, sleeping or waking. No said that? No, I'm afraid not. Horatio Nelson. You're very ignorant, Frank. I'll read him up between raids. And Frank? Yeah? Keep your chin up. The convoy will be through to you in a few days. Keep hitting him, my boys. I shall be hours yet. You and Maria go. We'll see you later. Oh. Okay, we'll move on. What did you do that for? Darling, have a heart. They want to be by themselves. Peter, it is known one must take no notice of Mother. That's what you all say. If she says, no, I cannot marry you, then I will marry you all the same. Do you think she will say no? Perhaps not. But she will put her head so and say, but and but and but. One must take no notice, you see? Because we know, don't we, that nothing will happen. I dare say they are a pretty pair, but I'm not sure it's a good thing. You realize he's talking about marrying her. Came and asked my permission yesterday. What did you say? I told him to think it over when he cooled off a bit. Because I can't stop him if he goes on with the to tell him what I think. Which is? You have to travel light in war. <laughs> now look, darling, I don't mean us. We've had all this out before. John, do you still want to marry me? Yes, Jan. Yes, of course I do. But I want to marry you in England where we belong. I want our families to be there, and I want our friends, and the I The bride, want... who was given away by her father, wore a nascent style gown of ivory satin. And why not? Isn't that a better way to make a start than out here in the middle of a permanent air raid? Never knowing which one of us is going to be killed next. Maybe. I never was much of a girl for the trimmings myself. Trimmings? I don't give a darn about the wedding breakfast. At least I don't want my wife to be starved. You're short of food. The ships that were to have brought food for your children are at the bottom of the Mediterranean. Please help us. But above all, help yourselves by surrendering now. That's the end of our afternoon talk to Malta. The orchestra will now play the Maltilla. Good afternoon, Mr. Ross. Good afternoon, Mrs. Gonzalez. Thank you. You may know why I've come here this afternoon. I may. I want to marry Maria. I wanted to ask your permission. I am glad you should ask, but there is no need. Maria is a woman now and knows her own mind. Yes, but I wanted to talk to you. You are a good man. It is... Not because of you, that... Yes? Maria has never been outside this island. Your home is a thousand miles away. When the war is ended, will you take her there? Of course. And if it does not end, if Malta is taken by the enemy? You shouldn't listen to that. It's just propaganda. When they said they would drop 7,000 tons of bombs on us in a month, it was called propaganda. But it was true, Mr. Ross. Wherever I went, I would take Maria with me. 
You would like to take her, Mr. Ross. But war destroys many hopes, many plans. But Mrs. Gonza, don't you see one can't live like that? You might as well say that a man shouldn't get married because he may be run over by a bus next day or struck by lightning. Ah, yes, when you are young, you feel the lightning cannot harm you. It's very rare to be struck by lightning. And if it does strike, one's done one's best by not being afraid. You may be right, Mr. Ross. And if you are not, you should be. But I am older than you and perhaps no longer brave. We have all said that Malta will never surrender, and that is true, Mr. Ross. But we must not say these brave things without facing what they mean. It may mean to starve to death, to see loved ones die, as I have done. Don't you hate us? Hate you? The British, for being here, for bringing all this on you. I do not hate anybody. I am Maltese. We Maltese do not like war, but it has always been our fate and our destiny. If there is to be war and we must be on a side, yours is the side we would choose. Mr. Ross, I cannot stop you from marrying Maria. I wouldn't if I could. But I ask you to wait for just a little while. But if we wait? Yes. You're quite right, of course. It would be better for Maria to wait. He was picked up down at the foot of the cliff by some of our British air hack boys. He spun a yarn about being a Maltese and escaped from Sicily. Luckily, they found his radio transmitter and arrested him. He'd obviously been put ashore from a submarine. He speaks perfect Maltese, yet he says now that he's an Italian named Riccardi. I have my doubts about that. I think he probably is Maltese. Have you any idea what he's after? No, sir. I haven't talked to him much yet. This will tell you. Essential that full-scale attacks are resumed against enemy convoys. I rely on you to provide maximum effort. Well, sir, that'd be very nice of them. If they give us something to do it with. Well, don't worry. This time they have. This convoy left Jib for Malta at 2100 hours last night. It's the biggest yet. With two aircraft carriers and every available escort vessel. 14 merchant ships and, what matters most, a large oil tanker, the Ohio. If it gets through, then we shall go a long way towards scuffering rubble. If it doesn't... I don't know what your pal with the radio set thought he could do from here. But I do know they'll do everything on Earth to stop that convoy. Why were you sent here? Look, I've plenty of time. You'll tell me in the end. Why not save us both trouble and tell me now? Why were you sent here? Why were you sent here? You know as well as I do. The whole island knows. Anyway, you're not an Italian, are you? And your name isn't Riccardi, is it? 
You're a Maltese. And your name? Look, darling, I just wanted to say there's a big job on. Yes. You know? Yes, the whole island is praying. It is the novena to Our Lady from now to the 15th. Well, the 15th's just about the time they'll get here. If they get here. And I just want to say that I'll be a bit tied up until then. And won't see much of you. All right, Peter. I shall be watching you. Take care of yourself. You say your son's letters come fairly regularly, Mrs. Gonzo? Fairly. The last was about six weeks ago. Does he ever express any opinions about the war? Oh, no. The letters are censored, of course. Just ordinary letters asking about the family. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Gonzo. Is that your son? Oh, yes. Yes. That is Giuseppe. Something... Something has happened to him. Yes. Is he... dead? No. I hate to have to tell you this, Mrs. Conza, but... your son is in the prison here. He was found on the shore. He had a wireless transmitter with him, and he was put ashore from an Italian submarine. You mean he was... He was spying... Giuseppe? Yes. What did they do to him? I... I don't know. You may never shoot him as a spy. Oh, no. A traitor is hanged. I must go to him. He will not stop me. Say they will not stop me. I must go to him. Giuseppe. I can't promise that. It's not in my hands. But if I can get permission for you to see him, I will. I had to know, because otherwise I couldn't be sure who you were. There's no reason why any of the rest of your family should ever be told, or anybody else, if you help me. Thank you. It is of some importance. Well, go on. What do you want to know? Why you were sent here? You know about the convoy? Mm hmm? There must be an oil tanker. In fact, there is bound to be one. Yes? If she got through, I had to find the positions of the fuel dumps after she had been unloaded and signal them back so that they could be bombed. I'm not a traitor. I'm not a traitor. This is my country, not yours. You've no right here. You were the only one? They wanted someone who spoke Maltese?
use Manchester and Cairo to destroy a foresight in five merchant ships. Let's say to the convoy and four of the escort guard, including one of the aircraft carriers. Well, nobody can say they're not doing their dandest to help us. No. Jim Hill's boy is in the Manchester. I hope he got away with it. Nice boy. I remember him at Dodd. Oh, the hell with Jim Hill's boy. I beg your pardon, Payne. That's all right. I never knew a job in which one just waited around so much. What was it you told me Willie Banks used to say? I'll go and swim for the stuff? Yes. Uh, well, by tomorrow, what's left of them ought to be within range of our bow fighters. After that, the spits can follow. Six hours to first light. Then we can go, thank God. They should be over the convoy in half an hour, sir. You mean they should be over what's left of it? Get my car up, Pierce. If Admiral Payne rings here, I've gone back to the operations room. Very good, sir. Pedestal now, ten miles ahead of you. Out. The fighters should sight pedestal convoy at any minute now, sir. Yes, keep one, uh, yes, we must keep one mile Sir, over. another 25 plus bandits approaching pedestal from the north. Hello, Epsom leader. 25 plus bandits approaching pedestal from the north. Some leader. Vector 290. Buster. Buster. Over. Kelly Ho, bandits ahead and below. Green section, break away, take high level bombers. Blue section up sun. Last time, anyway. 
And full of lovely grub. Aye, but not a ruddy tanker among the lot of them. What do you think we're going to fly the planes on dried milk? What the hell's happened to the Ohio, eh? She was hit six times, sir. After she'd been abandoned, parties of volunteers got back on board. Twice. But each time she was hit again. She was still afloat the last time we saw her, but on fire aft. I should like to say, sir, that everyone realised the importance of getting her in. They did their best. It's all right, Whitaker, we know that. What are you going to do now, sir? Well, that's our headache, my boy. And you go and get some rest. Thank you, sir. Well, as a matter of interest, what are we going to do now? They may hang me, but that doesn't make me a traitor. Malta is my country. And all I wanted to do was to save her from any more of this suffering and misery. You and... You and Paolo and Maria. All of you, you are good people. But you don't understand these things. From where I was, I could see it all. The British are finished, they cannot win. Why should Malta go on being crucified when a few bold strokes would save us all? You do see, Mother. You do know that what I was trying to do was the best for Malta and for all of you. You chose your side, as we have all had to do. Yes, but my side was the right side, the sensible side that would bring peace. You chose as you thought right, my son. We have done the same. The choices were different. That is all. Oh, uh, at least you will not be pointed at in Malta. I've arranged that. How's Paolo? Well. And Maria? She is well, too. It is best that they should not know about this. Not for my sake, you understand, but for theirs. You will tell them that you've had a letter to say that I have died in Italy. Oh, oh Marie, you know I would wish to stay and help you. Giuseppe. Is it permitted that I give my son this? It is only a crucifix. No, madam, I'm sorry. But I'll give it to the priest for him. I'll make sure he gets it. You see? I'm dead now. You cannot touch me or give me anything. Except your blessing. They will not mind that. I loved you all. But I'm dead now. Give me your blessing, Mother. And go. Tank is coming in. They managed to put out the fire to stop her sinking. She's lashed to a destroyer. Thank God for the Navy.
found the alert. But she's not a ship of war, sir. Isn't she? Sound the alert. Bugler, sound the alert. Place called El Alamein is the Eighth Army. If the Germans manage to advance now, Rommel will be able to pierce our main defense line before the Eighth Army's had time to consolidate. In other words, he'll grab the initiative before they're ready to hit back. Right. Our job's simple to slow down and stop Rommel by cutting off his supplies. That's why you gentlemen with the Wellingtons and Beauforts have been sent to us from the Middle East. If these convoys come down this way, they'll run into the Middle East Air Force and the fleet, so they'll almost certainly come straight down here. Well, as you can see, Malta is an ideal position as a base for attack. We've begun well. Two ships sunk out of a convoy of four, but that is only a beginning. From now until the Africa Corps is bogged down, you're going to keep at it day and night. This is an all-out offensive operation. The restrictions on the use of petrol and ammunition are off, and so is the ban on talking to base from the air. These convoys have got to be found, and if you run into trouble, with enemy fighters who are talking to base in finding them, then you'll just have to run into it and get out of it the best way you can. Now, a lot of you have been used to taking it. We're now going to dish it out. We're going to crack Rommel on the nose, even if we bark our knuckles a bit doing it. Have you anything to add to that, Admiral? Only that now we've got submarines based at Malta again, we shall be playing in this band too. <laughs> Show this time, Peter. Big tanker, two supply ships, and five escorts. Right, I'll watch them. They can sleep for a week. Where to, Skipper? The Aitai battle fleet. Peter Ross spotted them this morning, between Sicily and Sardinia. <whistles> what do we get for a battleship? A case of scotch? in archaeology. It was practically promised to just before the war began. Then we could go and live in Cambridge. Cambridge? <laughs> what is it like, Cambridge? Oh, very beautiful. 
much more beautiful than Oxford. You'd have to give tea parties. Why? One does in Cambridge. Oh. Perhaps we both hate it. I'd rather do field work, really. Could you bear it? Living in Mesopotamia, or Jutland, or Palestine. Or whatever my work took me. It'll be a free world. We'll see a lot of it. That's all I can offer you, really, to see our world and explore its past. And children, of course. Our children, or just children? Our children. How many shall we have? I would like six. But one must, of course, wait and see what God sends. Six? I'm not sure that we should be able to afford six. Not unless I get a chair. A chair? Being made a professor is called getting a chair. Oh. Professor. <laughs> professor. <laughs> professor Ross. <laughs> No contact, sir. We've lost them. Probably double back in the night. The biggest convoy they've ever tried. Everything's set up, and we have to have this filthy weather. I don't think it's any good stooging around in this, Peter. That's a waste of petrol. Anyway, if they double back, they might be anywhere in the Mediterranean. Hmm. Does that mean that I can reckon to be free for an hour? No. You better stand by in case it clears. You can see her this evening. All right. Well, let me know the moment it's at all possible. I should remember that the weather can change pretty quickly in these parts. According to the Metroport, we ought to be having bright sunshine. Yes, I dare say, but that's three hours wasted. If we don't find them today, we certainly won't find them until tomorrow morning. And after that, it'll be the very devil to get at them. I'm going down to the airfield to have a look. Half noon, Barnett. Half noon, Matthews. Half noon, sir. I think it'll clear up a bit, sir. Uh, you've got somebody standing by? Yes, sir. Peter Ross. I think he might get off. It's still a bit thick, sir, but... Go and find him, will you? I'd like a word with him. Yes, sir. Well, you've got to get you onto these people before dark, so make sure you're absolutely ready to go. Very good, sir. Afternoon, Ross. Afternoon, sir. You've seen this convoy. It's the biggest yet. It's got to be found. Go and find it. If you can't see it, find it by smell. Yes, sir. It's still pretty thick here, but it may be better further out. We shall only just get on them before dusk anyway. So if you pick them up, you will radio their position. Don't talk until you find them. But when you do, give it to us at once. Does that apply to wherever they are, sir? It applies wherever they are. You understand, Ross? Yes, sir. Then get going, and quick. He's got long-range tanks on. But even so, he's got about one more hour before he'll have to pack them. Nothing with Ross yet? No, sir. Well, where is he? Is he still on the plot? Well, I don't see why he's messing about down there. They'll almost certainly be staring due east now.
Hello, Stryker. Hello, Stryker. This is picture one. Here he is, sir. Put him on the speaker. Enemy destroyer traveling at full speed. May have made a depth charge attack and now regaining convoy. Am shadowing. Bright sunshine here. Out. Mighty quick if he's going to find them, sir. He's blown the gaff about his position. They'll be onto him in a few minutes. Probably got fighters in the air at this moment. Oh. Tally ho. Convoy sighted about ten miles ahead. I can't quite see yet, but I make it one big tanker, three other big ships, and four destroyers. Sir, six enemy aircraft approaching. Damn, that was quick work. Tip him off about this. Tell him to get his picture and get out. Give the bombers a position and get them off. Hello, Mac. Hello, picture one. Hello, picture one. This is Stryker. Six bandits at 20,000 feet. Get your picture and then vamoose pronto. Over. Right, ho. Going in for picture now. Tanker, three biggest chaps, four destroyers. One flank coming up. I think one of the destroyers is one of those new special jobs. No sign of your bandits yet. They're up sun to him now, sir. Tell him to break away and get out, quick. Hello, picture one. Break off contact and return base. Watch them out of the sun. Received, understood, and welcomed. I'm breaking away now. Your little friends are with me. This is where it gets tricky. Hello, picture one. Hello, picture one. Are you receiving? Over. It may only be his transmitter, sir. Are oh, the bombers off yet? Taking off now, sir. Good. I'll just make it before dark. Hello, picture one. Are you receiving? Over.
Wimpers are over them now, sir. Good. seen hardship and we have seen triumph. We shall see more of both. If history remembers us, let it say that we stood fast in faith, giving freely what little we had and what little we were, never doubting that we spent ourselves for the general good. <laughs> 